Good evening, everyone. Thank you for joining us for Tuesdays at 8. We have a very special treat tonight on Tuesdays at 8. We have Katie Helmrich, who has been on before. She was here in December with Valerie Matthias. And tonight, we're going to be talking about a very special project that she created. And I think you're going to be really excited about it. So, Katie, there she is. Hi. Hello. Thanks for being here this evening. Thanks for having me. As we always start every Tuesdays at 8, for those of you who are new to Visual Faith, I would like to answer the question, what is Visual Faith? So hold on. I'm going to play our beautiful video that will share a lot of information. If you have any questions, please go ahead and put anything in the comments. I love that video, even though I made it. I like the music and I like the pictures. It makes me feel very happy when I watch it. Yeah, there's so many things in there. I notice something different every time it scrolls I past. <laughs> it's amazing. And it was really, it was a fun project, but it was actually very hard because to condense three years to over 2,000 resources right. into a one minute video, you have to be really creative to do that. <laughs> I'm glad we were able to put that together. <laughs> Well, let's begin in prayer. And Katie has offered to lead us in prayer this evening. So if we'll all bow our heads. Dear Heavenly Father, thank you so much for this opportunity. Thank you for this three-year project with so many resources that we get to share. It's been such a blessing for so many of us to honor you in our artwork in new ways that we just keep experimenting and find that you are still faithful, you are still good, and we learn more about you every time we read your word and touch a pencil to paper. Please bless us this evening and help your word to shine through all that we say and do. Thank you that your love is a fact, not just a feeling. Help us to dwell in that and to celebrate it through this project. In your name we pray. Amen. Oh, that was wonderful. Well, I want to introduce Katie to you this evening, and I'm going to read her wonderful bio. Katie lives in Bay City, Michigan, on the banks of Dutch Creek. Don't know where that is. Sounds fun. With her <laughs> husband and three children. She is an artist and a child of God who has found that she can't get by without a little of both each and every day. Blending devotion and prayer with art was a major turning point for Katie. Now she enjoys volunteering as an illustrator for Visual Faith Ministries and staff writer for FindMyNextSteps.org. Life with her crew gets pretty crazy, but recording how God is working in their midst through art and writing helps her find joy in everyday blessings and keeps her focus on Jesus. Visual reminders of God's love and faithfulness like those in this project have been a blessing in her home. And you're going to love when you see this. If you have not found this project um, on our website, it's going to be really fun. So Katie, what I'd like to start off with, if you can put um, please share with people what prompted you to create this, uh, this project and all the accompanying things that you've put together. Well, uh, I believe it was about two years ago I put this project together. It was back when groups could actually meet in person. Yes. <laughs> Imagine that. So we had a small group at our church that was meeting once a month that I was leading uh, and I put this together because it was February and it seemed like sort of the theme, love. At the time, I was still really grappling a lot with my own uh, battle with anxiety. And so I was really struggling with this feeling of, I know God loves me, but sometimes we don't 
feel it. And so is this actual process that I had been learning on making your brain think in a line and to find that uh, almost like a tow rope when you're just out to sea, <laughs> crazy, you know, it's not real. Uh -huh. but finding that path back to reality, back to truth. And I found that writing scripture helped me more than just reading scripture. Uh, so when I was trying to come up with, well, how do you make some sort of happy, fun, love thing when you don't really feel lovey? This made a lot of sense to me because I'm not loving because I'm good at loving. I'm loving because God loves me. And God's not telling me, you should love people. He's filling us to overflowing with love. And we can't help it because it just bubbles up mm -hmm. over the top of us. And everything we do is blessed by him. And remembering that is it's such a lifeline. It can pull you right back in and help refocus. So this was sort of a growth process for me as I was pulling it together. I went from, I don't really feel like doing this <laughs> to like, oh, this is really valuable. And I'm really excited that that came together. And I've never done it with my family yet, but uh -huh. I think this February we're going to go ahead and the kids are good enough at writing that we'll be able to put this together as a family. Oh, that sounds wonderful. So tell us a little bit about what you've put together. And in case you don't know, it's called As I Have Loved You is the actual um, project on the mm -hmm. website. And I probably should look in comments because hopefully Emily's on here. She's here we go. Yes. Facebook user just put it up there for us. So she put the link in there in case you want to oh, see thank you. what she's going to be talking about. Mm -hmm. so go right ahead and share a little bit about what's in it. Sure. Uh, can you share the first slide? Yes. Thank you. So this is the overall image that I started with, the command from John 13, where Jesus said, uh, love one another as I have loved you. Seemed like a big ask, but it was right as he was getting ready then to allow Judas to betray him, to be arrested and to, to die for all of our sins, to pay that debt and then to raise again. And we were with him in that. But this idea that the love is overflowing. And now that we've focused on this, we can focus more on loving one another. So this image is part of what's available in that resource. Uh, because it was designed for a group, the pages that are in the downloadable printable resource has uh, multiple images of each of these on each page. A little less user-friendly maybe if you're on your own, but you'll have the margin with all the words and you have the graphics only so that you can put it right over text or anywhere else you find it fits in your Bible. Oh, beautiful. So in that example that you're showing us, how did you get the design on is that freehand or did you trace from your graphic no i traced it okay yeah so i just put it behind it okay so to a window i think at that point i didn't have a light board yet okay. <laughs> but <Right>. it worked <laughs> so as um Katie is explaining. So because Bible paper in your Bible is typically very, very paper thin, you can usually see the design. So if you lay that underneath and as she said, get some light coming through, you can actually trace it on there. It's so yeah. beautiful. I love that design. Yep. And then the next slide I think has a couple other options. Okay. So this is the, I pulled together 28 verses that you can use as sort of a writing schedule. Um, there's a lot of these writing Bible writing challenges out there based on different themes or a book of the Bible. So this would mean that every day in February, for example, you could write out carefully one of these passages. And then as you're writing it, you have a little bit more time to slow down and really let it sink in than you would if you were just to read it. Uh, there's no reason it has to be in February. It could be any 28 days or you could do more than one at a time. Again, this is sort of four up on a page because it was for a group, but it's absolutely something you can do on your own. Well, I love that you've done that. And um, I'm going to just show, can you tell us a little about this example of how to do it? And then we'll talk yeah. a little bit more about scripture writing. Yeah. So scripture writing can be in anything, anywhere, but one way to sort of soak in this idea that we are so loved by God, that God's love is throughout scripture, it is absolutely fact, no matter how we feel, is to collect all of these verses in one place. So one way to do that would be to write them on index cards or on scraps of paper. And then I just had yarn. So I hole punched them and tied them together. 
And then I have all of the verses here. You could also put them on, we all love garlands. We're good at garlands. Yeah. You can put them on garlands or you could display them in another way around your home or write them in a notebook. Uh, this 3D heart on the cover, there's also instructions for this in the resource. Super, super simple, but they're really fun. Mm, great. Well, let's talk a little bit more about scripture writing. I just started that practice about, I guess, a little over two years ago. And at first, it sounded so strange to me. <laughs> yeah. strange. Just write it. Just write it. And that's really what I keep saying. Really? Just write it. What does that do? Um and so I just got a notebook, you know, an inexpensive notebook from Dollar Tree or something. And I just started and I was following a plan like this is with, you know, write these verses every day. And the first day or so I'm going, OK, so I wrote it. OK. But then as I slowed down, because I read very fast and I was writing it a little bit slower, words would kind of pop out to me. So then I decided how I did it was I wrote it at the top of the page. It was line paper. And then at the bottom, I just started doodling after I'd written the whole verse, I just started pulling a word or two out and doodling it and coloring or whatever. So I ended up spending probably 20, 30, maybe more minutes doing it. Mm -hmm. Then I got it. Then I understood what scripture writing is. So if you're a visual learner, uh, that actually can be very helpful for you. So you can do it in a notebook, as you mentioned, or I like your little book if you want to create a little book that you could um, share and things like that. Now, have you done this with children? Have you, is it easily adaptable to children? I think so. It's going to depend on your kid. Uh, if you have one of those children who's assigned a five sentence paragraph and writes five sentences four words each, this is probably not the right project. <laughs> Wait, say that again. What did they write? <laughs> five five sentences that are each four words. Oh, okay. If we're going for like the minimal, we don't like writing. This is not the project. Okay. But if they're at a point where writing is not a hassle or a punishment, um, my daughter is struggling in some ways right now. And so she has also experienced uh, the fact that if you just slow down and now you don't have to think your own thoughts, you're just going to rest in God's truth and write it down. It gives you an excuse to release your balled up fists, mm -hmm. to let your tense shoulders kind of settle. And you're just going to be there in that moment. And things stand out to you in a way that they don't when you're just reading them. But it's not like back in school where we were assigned, I will not chew gum in class a hundred times. That's not what this is. It's just a slowing down. <laughs> and then you do have the opportunity to maybe highlight some of the words or mm -hmm. make some of the words really super big if they stand out as important. So a way of interacting with the text a little bit without there being that artistic pressure to okay. draw something amazing. Now, I just thought of an idea. I don't have little children anymore. Mine are all grown up. But what if uh, you as a parent had children that did like to somewhat draw and you could give them a card you, that you and the child or children you could read the verse, kind of talk about the verse, and they could draw something. Even if they keep drawing a heart on every page, mm -hmm. it doesn't mm -hmm. really matter because they're listening and they're absorbing. How do you think that would work? I think that'd work well. That's kind of what we're going to end up having to do at our level because, I mean, my eldest is going to just write them and enjoy writing them, and my middle child is going to kind of do a little of both, <laughs> probably have a lot of comic strips. <laughs> Which is fine. It's the way he processes it. Exactly. Fun. And Jane will probably just write her name on every card. <laughs> but we'll be there and we'll we'll talk about God's love. It'll be it won't be time wasted. Right. Things get absorbed whether you know yeah. it or not. Well, let's talk about that really fun heart. So mm -hmm. um Katie's got some really cute ideas. Look how cute these are. Yeah, they're super easy. You can cut out any heart shape you want. You just want all the hearts to be the same shape. And then it's really just putting glue on half of a heart and then half of another and sticking them together and building it around in a circle. It sounds really weird to just say it. And I struggled to write the directions. <laughs> but once you start actually moving paper, it all comes together and it makes a lot of sense. Okay. I love them because they're adorable and it's super easy to make a whole bunch to decorate around the house. And it's also a nice place to put, um, I wrote Bible verses on some of them, but just a couple words about what we're remembering. Okay. It's not over in your face, but. Right. So cute. And then look what, how creative Katie is. Look what she did with them. 
Yeah, so if you don't want to have them in a whole ornament all the way around, then you just take the last two pieces and glue them to your page. So on this one on the left, love the Lord your God with all your soul is what's showing, but there's actually heart, soul, and mind. So they're all three there, but they're all in the same heart, which was oh, fun. Oh, that's all. Okay, now. Okay, I see what you're talking about. Okay. Yeah. Oh, that's a great there's like, it's like a little mini booklet then stuck yes. to your Yes. Oh, that's so cute. And then the other one you just used as, uh, so did you again trace that or is that actually your Bible margin? You stuck it on the page. Uh, I traced that, I believe. Okay. Because I don't have the black outlines. So I probably traced that. Um, and then the heart that I added there is just scrapbook paper, the 3D one. Uh, on the last heart, the one that sticks down to the page, because I didn't want to just put scrapbook paper right over my text there. Mm -hmm. I used some scotch tape so I can stick it down without it being completely obliviating the words. It's so pretty. It looks so nice. So those are two different. Okay. I was looking at which pages you picked. Matthew 22 on the left and yeah. John 13. John 13. Okay. Mm -hmm. Those are beautiful. Those are really, really nice. Well, let's get some comments from people who are have been talking to us while we've been talking. We've got a lot of hellos from all over. Thank you. I'm sure that's Emily who posted the link. Um Martha says, I like it already. Okay, let's see. Donna asked a question. I'm curious about using it with our fifth and sixth graders in February. I think it would be really great for that age group. My daughter is in sixth grade, um, and I think she would have been fine with it last year. That's a good idea. And Connie said, writing scripture just cements it in our soul. A diff I, I totally agree, in a diff very different way. Mm -hmm. And then Jamie chimed in and said, and it cements in our brain. <laughs> okay, so you, you got your first, let's see, she said that. Hold on. Here we go. Connie, of course, we all want to know what Jane will do. What will Jane do? If you're, if you're not on the inside on this, it's not a private mm -hmm. joke, but um, Katie's youngest daughter is named Jane, and she's just four, correct? Yep. And Jane is remarkable in her comments and things she does. And Katie has a wonderful sense of humor and loves to post those every day. So it's like we all want to see what is Jane doing today? What did Jane think? <laughs> yeah, we'll see. She just figured out how to write her name. For a while, she was convinced that all she needed to write was J because she's the only one with J. So that was her name. That's how she spelled it, J. <laughs> like there's more letters, but we were wrong. We didn't know. Okay. <laughs> then she spelled it J-N-A-E and she was right. She knew and we didn't know. But this week, for the first time, she brought home a paper that had her name spelled correctly. Woo, so, big time. Yeah. <laughs> okay, so let's see. Valerie says, I'm going to free up my die cut machine and cut a bunch of hearts. Now, yeah. that if you have a machine to do it, go for it. You can make a lot of these. Otherwise, you can sit in front of the TV or whatever and cut out hearts. Mm -hmm. And see, Donna gave us an idea. These hearts would be fun with scrap printed paper or hymnal paper. Oh, hymnal paper would be really cool. Yes. Sure. That'd be pretty. Let's talk about that for a second, because I think we reference this almost in every episode. Mm -hmm. I don't think people understand because I've seen some questions. Well, where do you get a hymnal? Um, do you, do you want to share how you've gotten a hymnal? Well, I don't have a hymnal to cut apart, but oh. I've heard that they're pretty easy to find at like a thrift store. Yes. And or uh, talk to churches that are buying new hymnals because we're that's true. Yeah, I bet we have a bunch of the old ones. Yeah. I I've been associated with two different churches that got rid of mm -hmm. like a couple hundred hymnals. So yes, mm -hmm. you want one of those because as mixed media artists, we want that hymnal paper. So you could do so many fun things. Mm -hmm. um, let's see. Somebody downloaded it and ready to print. Hold on. I have no problem seeing tonight. Okay, I think we got all of the questions so far. So let me take that one back off. Well, let's talk a little bit more about what you started off by saying about struggling with knowing God loved you and that 
you're commanded to love others. Can you share a little bit more about that? How that, like what was happening for you and then what you've since experienced or learned? Sure. Um, oh, sorry. It's always, I think, a tricky balance when we are focusing on how we feel in our faith because we often do have these really great feelings of closeness with God and we have these uplifting experiences. But especially if you battle with depression or anxiety, you're very familiar with the fact that the way you feel doesn't necessarily reflect what's happening around you. Yes. Sometimes it does, but a lot of times it doesn't. Mm -hmm. And so you have to uh, get very used to the fact that the way you feel also doesn't define your faith. That can be really hard. I really struggled with that because I knew all of these things and I should feel happier, right? Because mm -hmm. I know that God loves me. I know that God's in control, but that feeling is still something you always are, are battling. Um, but knowing that God's love is not, a, not just a feeling, it is a fact. Then you know that once you're grounded in truth, there's an opportunity then to kind of hold on just keep going one hand at a time on that tow rope. And then you get back to the point where you can feel. I really found um, when I was struggling the most, I read through the book of Psalms slowly. Mm -hmm. And that was amazing because I felt like David completely got the whole depression anxiety thing. Yes, I, I got the same personal experience. Yes. Thank you, David. Now I feel like God understands me. I don't have to fake it. Yeah. Pour out your soul at the beginning. You just are a wreck. Oh, woe is me. I might as well lay under a rock and die. But then God shows him. He transforms his heart through prayer and through truth. No, God is steadfast. God is your refuge. God is your strength. God loves you. God will handle justice. And then by the end of every psalm, David was ready to praise the Lord, oh, my soul. So that process helped me a lot. And then looking through how how a, a faith-filled person could still have those times where they knew the truth, but didn't feel the feelings, mm -hmm. but used the truth to get there. That was a big deal for me. Mm. Very insightful. And I had to write down your quote, the way you feel doesn't define your faith. Mm -hmm. That is, that's so powerful, Katie, because we live in a society that tells us it's all about how I feel. Right. Everything, every decision I make should be based on how I feel. If I don't feel good, then you're going to know it. And if I want this, yeah, it's all about feeling. So that can be a disconnect in, in our faith walk with God of understanding that and not relying on your feelings. And I would say you've experienced um, same kind of thing that I had the same issue because m my feelings kind of drove my life for the first 40 years of my life. Mm -hmm. and when I became a born again Christian, things were very, very different of, wait, it's not about how I feel. It's what he says. Right. But I had to keep going back and go, well, wait, what does, what does God actually say? Mm -hmm. Oh, well, that's totally opposite of how I've lived all these years. So it's, mm -hmm. it's very important to understand that part of um, life. So we've got this whole conversation going on over here about hymnals. <laughs> okay, let's see. I guess I brought it up. And okay, Martha says, I have three old hymnals for my church, but I'm still hesitant to take up pages. Seems almost wrong to destroy these books. See, I don't look at it as destroying. If you are a mixed media artist, you're actually using God's word just in a different way. That's not destroying mm -hmm. it. That's actually maybe calling more attention to it in a variety mm -hmm. of ways and in, in, in projects. And then sometimes those words may be just the thing somebody needs to hear or mm -hmm. tune to that song. So we all like that. Um, let's see. Eden said, I like to do that for Bible verses, but hadn't thought of the hymns. And then this is, Anne wants to say this to you, so you can read it. Anne says, thank you for your honesty and speaking the truth of how depression and anxiety can affect our faith walk. Hmm. Very, very, very true. Thanks mm -hmm. Anne, for recognizing that. And then somebody else said, this was my first and biggest lesson as a believer, not relying on my feelings. Yes. That was my experience also. The same thing. Well, but doesn't feel, why would I do that? Yeah. Yeah, it's interesting. 
Yeah, it's hard because there's so many, so many times when people talk about these mountaintop faith experiences, you kind of get this feeling like if I'm close to God, I must feel great. But it's just not that way. And I'm really glad because it means that it's not relying on me. It's all God. God doesn't change. We're good. Absolutely. And in fact, I feel closer to him when things are really, quote, what I would say bad. When, you know, I feel like there is no hope and I'm just down on myself. That's when I feel the closest to him. So Mm -hmm. I always say, how did I live through this without having him for the first 40 years of my life? So now back to the, we're just going all over the place tonight. So Connie (laughs) said, I climbed into a dumpster a few times to grab old hymnals when I heard a church was recycling them. Well, (laughs) I guess you could do that too if that's what you want to do. (laughs) That is funny. I think it is easier to tear apart a hymnal and use bits than it feels a little weirder to tear apart a Bible. This is like the gateway. (laughs) That's the gateway. (laughs) We just start here. I found a uh, a um, Bible in, in Hebrew mm-hmm. in the thrift store. And I brought it home thinking, oh, I can use this in my heart. And then I realized, Diane, you don't read Hebrew. So you can't even <laughs> figure out what where the verse is. Does that make sense? I couldn't even find it. Yeah. So I went, okay, how am I going to use this? And then I felt like, oh, I'm ripping apart a Bible. And then I went, no, I think he gave this to me for a reason that I want to Include the Hebrew. I'm just hoping that it says what I'm thinking it says, or it's or close. <laughs> I'm scared about this. I think this is good too. Do you want to read this one? Sure. I think going through my depression helped me grab hold of my faith and grow closer to God. I love that your feeling is not defining your faith. We're gonna have to make a yeah. topic on that one. Artist girl, you need to do that. <laughs> it has a fun little graphic because everybody <laughs> is resonating with them like it resonated with me. Yeah. Oh, for sure. Thanks. For it is true because you well. feel like you know what you're doing and then something bad happens. And when you find that I got through that, we're still good. That's a big yeah. deal. Yes, very much so. And then sometimes I think we can misinterpret what's happening. Mm-hmm. Uh, I know that particularly happened to me uh, like 15 years ago. I felt God had called me to do something and all these doors were opening and it was going. And then all of a sudden the giant one slammed shut. Oh. And I read it as I'm not supposed to do this. He's really right. going to that. So I actually uh, asked 10 people who were my spiritual mentors at the time to come to my house and let's pray. And then you need to tell me what God's saying in this situation. And it was amazing because what God was saying to them was not what I thought he was saying, because he actually said, no, you need to forget that because those things that are happening that you're perceiving as a no are actually shifting the focus of who's going to get the glory. If you do what I ask you to do. Right. Like people would say to me, Oh, you're so wonderful because you did this. And I was like, No, it has nothing to do with me. Mm-hmm. The only glory that I get was no glory. I obeyed him. He asked me to do something. And mm-hmm. then look at all the things that happened after that totally were in his hand. So that's another example of where you have to be really careful how, if you suffer from anxiety and depression, which I have my entire life, how I interpret things is really not the way God interprets. Right. Um, and you need that scripture for a wise, mature Christian to explain that, you know, you know, really, that's maybe that's not really what he's saying. And somebody made another really good comment. If you want to read this one. Uh, depression and anxiety can take over our lives. It is overwhelming, but we have God to turn to. I really wonder about those who do not have God in their lives. All too many turn to suicide. Please, let's all pray for them. Mm. Yeah, until you go through it yourself, you wonder how it's hard to picture why anybody would get to that point. But mm-hmm. yeah. if I didn't have God, where, where would I have turned? It was it was beautiful to see how God used that faith to work through those situations and to then make it easier to empathize with other people, mm-hmm. to reach out and say, but there's other things. Right. There really mm-hmm. is. Awesome. Mm-hmm. Well, let's see. I don't think we have any other questions questions i don't think we have any other questions 
So we're coming up on um, our time this evening. Is there anything else you want to say about this project? You want to share anything as you've done it or? Well, it's a pretty straightforward project. I like it because you can use lots of pretty paper that I never seem to have time to use. You just cut it up and glue it together. <laughs> And it doesn't have to be about pretty lettering. There's, it's very low artistic pressure. You're doing, you're reading, you're experiencing, but it doesn't have to look amazing. I mean, none of these do, but this is one of those very low key, just sit here and enjoy how much God loves you. You're right. It's very low key creatively, number one. And number two, so that shouldn't back anybody up. And they, because you know, I look at your drawings that you do for us and I always go, oh, I could never do that because I can't, I can't draw. But then the things that I can do, other people look at and say, oh, I could never do that. And I'm thinking that was, that's like a nothing thing. So, mm -hmm. it, you know, it's all in perspective. But mm -hmm. the point that I would like to uh, for us to close with tonight is, yes, the project is fun. You can do this with your family. You could do this with your if you're a school teacher, if you're involved in a small group, it'd be a really fun project to do. But most importantly is to look at um, what I love is you pointed out 28 verses about steadfast love. And if you get nothing else out of this, but just writing those verses, even if you start and don't finish the whole month, doesn't really matter. Just the fact that you start that process, as we've talked about, that kinesthetic process of writing, and then it goes into it goes into your head, and even more importantly, it goes into your heart because you're reading this and you're you're writing it, and you realize he is speaking to me, little old me, just me. He's really speaking to me, and so scripture writing can be really fun. And I like that you've showed us how to make it in a little book or put it in a notebook or a lot of things. So that's really what. Mm -hmm. I think want to make sure everybody focuses on. Yeah, I feel like, I mean, I don't want to overstate the facts. I don't know everybody, but everything that's been going on and changing the last year and everything we're looking at in the next several months, I think everybody's kind of dealing a little bit with nerves. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Even if you're not fearful, there's a certain tension we're all kind of dealing with. Yeah. Um, so even if this wasn't something that it was a 28 day discipline, if you had uh, maybe cut them in strips and just randomly pulled one out when you started to feel yourself tensing to sit down and just relax your shoulders, write this down, dwell on this truth. Or if you wrote them down and then put the verses in a jar and pulled them out randomly again to say, no, this is, this right. is true. Remember God was there for me on that day when I first wrote it, he's here for me again. Now that steadfast love does not change no matter what the circumstances around us look like. Mm -hmm. And that's a great idea for a jar or whatever, because, um, you know, this show is not me talking about the news, but how do we not? <laughs> okay. I can't watch the news anymore because it's so depressing. Okay. Mm -hmm. Then I don't have direct experience with anybody that has COVID or suffering from any of that, but all my friends do. So then I hear that and that, if you suffer from anxiety and depression, that can just send me off into a tailspin of, right. oh, it's, wor it's worse than I thought. You know, mm -hmm. I don't know how I'm going to get through it. So um, I think this is a great idea for people to focus on. He still loves us no matter what's going on, no matter how we feel, whether, mm -hmm. as you said, feeling has nothing to do with our faith, but to be true and to really listen to him. Somebody made a couple of good comments that I want to share here. And I want to say, thank you, Donna. This is a great comment. Do you want to read that one, Katie? There is suddenly a new connectivity I feel to this group. Thank you for a community of transparency. Prayers for peace are always present. It's good to be a body of believers that can be encouraging and pretty and cute, but it also, we don't always live there. And so it's good that we can have both because the people that are on cloud nine can pull the rest of us up a little bit. <laughs> and those of us who've been in difficult places can empathize, but our God is big enough for real life, real emotions. And if we can be a community where we do real life, that's it's a powerful thing. I agree. And that's really our, our um, focus. And Connie reminds us beginning in and with low key style, for a very big return in God time to us. And I, and I really mm -hmm. love that too. 
And Eden said, well said, Katie, I great way to incorporate a beginner art aspect to scripture writing, which is great. So if you haven't tried scripture writing, let's, you know, you really want to get, I just need to make, take some pictures and post mine in the Facebook group because yeah. I was doing it and it was just, it was my new, my new normal, like a year ago, I should have been doing it now, but and Connie reminds us this project can last longer than 28 days. Connie is the queen of reminding us. I remember when I first met her 10 years ago and she started saying she was doing this book about the study of the Psalms. And I looked and I went, there's over 150 Psalms. How long is that going to take you? And her, she looked at me and she said, it might take forever. And that was just, that blew my mind that somebody would actually start something thinking it might take forever because mm -hmm. I'm obviously very much I'm going to start it and I'm going to end it and then I'm going to go on the next thing. And for her to say that to me was like, wow, okay. I don't have to put all that pressure on myself. So that's really, really, really good. And then Jenny reminded us low key in the artistic realm, but what power in writing the word. Thank you very, very much. And Kate, uh, Valerie said, Yes, a very caring group. I was so nervous to tell Connie Denninger about what caused my depression. I never should have been. She was so kind and caring and told me God is using my story. I pray that he will continue to do that for years to come. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Valerie. Now, see, I don't want to cry. <laughs> yeah, it really helps when you have people in your life, which is hopefully who we are at Visual Faith Ministry that you can really speak truth to, you can say how you really feel yeah. and they will respond and love you, but point you back to God's word. And that's really where it all comes from. And that's what you've shared. Everything about tonight, Katie was mm -hmm. um, this a fun little project, but it's all about his, I have to say it again, steadfast love that he mm -hmm. has. So we are done. If anybody has any more questions or comments, oh my gosh, wait, hold on. I didn't move the thing. Move I'm sorry, there's more things. Eden says, this scripture writing plan for February might be fun to do with a family member or write them on cards to place around the house. Eden is our, is our creative girl. Or place around the house or send to someone in the mail. Although be careful with the mail. <laughs> send them now and they'll oh be there. Oh my gosh. I don't know anybody else having a problem. Yes. One of our coaches sent me something. I did not know she sent it to me. I got a package the other day and I went, why? Well, this is interesting. And I looked at it. It took 30 days for her to get it. <laughs> and it's Christmas items. So I said, well, I'm really sorry. Christmas is way over. She doesn't want to be for next year. But yeah. Yeah, the mail. Well, then what I would um, have mentioned to people is if you're doing scripture cards or you're writing that and you want to share something, just take a picture and <laughs> you know, send them the digital copy because who knows if they'll ever get the real one. At least they'll know you were really praying. Right. So. I've gotten a couple of those little text messages and they, they mean just as much as opening the mail sometimes, which I'm glad about because I'm terrible about following through from the counter to the mailbox. <laughs> I never send anything out. <laughs> hey, you should give that job to Jane. She <laughs> will be really happy to remind you. <laughs> Oh, and Martha said, so good to know that I'm not the only one going through depression during this time. Thank you, Katie and Diane. A very enjoyable session. Oh, thank you so much, people. I, I love this. If you knew, some of you do know, I'm just going to, I have to put in a little uh, plug. We are working on our first ever virtual prayer retreat. It will be March 6th. It will be an entire day. We have uh, 11 speakers that have put together some phenomenal presentations about prayer, all different types of prayer, techniques for prayer, but really more the practice of prayer and how we can turn to that. And so we are also going to be launching a brand new website. So when I say to you, I like Tuesdays at eight, but right now I'm working like 14 hours a day and I'm retired. Okay. <laughs> I work 14 hours a day. When I get done tonight, I have to get back on the site because we're hopefully going to launch our registration page this week. So between Linda Econ and I, we are going to get it ready and we're going to get it up and running. So yes, Jane is our new post mistress. Connie, you gave her a new job. <laughs> So you need to tell her, Jane, you have to remind me. Yeah, she will. I'll never she will remind you. Yes, <laughs> she absolutely will. So. Well, thank you, everyone. 
And um, as usual, I want to say thank you to Katie. Thank you so much for coming on again. Uh, we really enjoyed your presentation tonight. Your presentation of your heart is really what I want to say, because it was about your heart tonight. And thank you for being vulnerable and sharing how you feel and how God is using that to minister to yourself and to your family and to everybody else on this show tonight. So as always, I will tell us, tell you all, please join us next week for conversation, encouragement, and inspiration. We have follow-up conversations in our Visual Faith Facebook group. If you're brand new to our group, please make sure you're in our Facebook group now and because you will be so inspired and encouraged and it's just wonderful conversations that are there. So I thank you very much, Katie, and thank you for everyone who has joined us this evening. And we just pray that you have a good rest of this week.